Welcome. This video is on Los Chatelets principle. I'm Dr. Ryan Hayes. I teach at Andrews University Chemistry Department. We're going to hopefully help you understand how you can affect an equilibrium and how it will reestablish itself. We're going to look at temperature, pressure volume, catalyst uh, changes, but first and foremost, changes in concentration. If you can figure this out, you'll figure out the rest. Changes to equilibrium are governed by this Le Chatelier's principle. Here's a picture of Le Chatelier. And he stated that if a system at equilibrium, okay, it's at equilibrium, you disturb it somehow, add something, take away something, it will shift its equilibrium position to counter the effect of the disturbance. What do we mean by that? Well, this is means you can predict what's going to happen if you make some changes to a chemical reaction that's at equilibrium. This is very powerful. Now, Henry Le Chatelier, you can see that he lived from 1850 to 1936. More of an engineer, but basically a chemist as well, and uh, taught chemistry, and he worked on important things like glass and ceramics and analytical chemistry, and also on the important process of fixing nitrogen. And so they're very important. So, yeah, that's close enough. Uh, even though he's an engineer, we'll let him into the chemistry club. His uh, principle, though, said in terms of concentration, if you remove something, the reaction is going to shift to make more of it because you've gotten rid of it. But if you add something, it's going to shift away so that it will get rid of this excess that you have. So let's say you have a reaction of A plus B going to make C and D. Once again, A and B, we call them those things, the reactant. They're on the left-hand side. And then products we call are on the right-hand side, C and D. So if we increase the reactants, their concentration somehow, or the pressure, the reaction is going to shift to right and make more products, C and D. If you were to take away the reactants and somehow, then the reaction will shift to the left and it will make more A and B while it takes away C and D. You can't just make A and B without losing some of the products. If you have a way where you're making more products or you can add externally some more products into the equilibrium, the reaction is going to shift and make reactants, and that will decrease the concentration or pressure of the products. Probably one of the most important tricks that you can do on this as a scientist is if we can find a way to get rid of or lower the concentration of the products, then the reaction is going to shift to the right, consume up the reactants, and make more products. Well, how does this look in terms of a problem or the mathematics of that? Pretty much what general chemistry students are going to be exposed to. Let's consider the equilibrium between butane and isobutane. Butane is on the left-hand side here, so that's our reactant. Right side, isobutane. And you can see those are fluorocarbon uh, hydrocarbons there. Let's assume you're at equilibrium. You've got the product isobutane at 1.25 molar and the concentration of the reactant butane is at 0.5 molar. Now, you're going to disturb the equilibrium by adding 1.5 molar butane. And when the system comes back in the equilibrium, what are the concentrations of the uh, product and reactant, isobutane and butane? The equilibrium constant for the system is 2.5. I'm going to teach my students think about what I call a Q check. Well, we're going to compare Q, the concentrations of the product and uh, the reactant and the product, right at the beginning. And we just set it up just like we do an equilibrium expression, concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. Now I have 1.25 molar of the product, but I'm going to have in total now 0.5 molar plus 1.5 molar, a uh, total of 2 molar uh, of the reactant. So that shows that uh, the Q, 0.625, that's definitely less than K. So which way will this reaction shift? Good time to pause the video if you want to think about it. All right, coming back in, we now see that if Q is less than K, the reaction has to shift to the right. Shifting to the right means reducing the amount of reactants and making products. Well, how does this look mathematically? How would you set up a problem to actually solve this? Huh, this is where our ice table is set up. Some people call them rice. I like to just call them ice. But you do need to look at your reactant, your reaction, the butane going to make isobutane. And we're going to see what our initial values are, how do they change, and what's the final equilibrium values. Initially, there's going to be 2 molar 
butane, and that's probably what seems a bit tricky because you, when the student looks at the problem and say, no, I had uh, 0.5 molar butane, because that's what the problem states. Ah, but we've shifted it to a new initial by adding in 1.5, so we've got to add those two things together. So that's the new initial. Otherwise, you were still at equilibrium if you left it at 0.5 molar. That's an equilibrium amount. That's not the new initial, non-equilibrium. Okay, the product had not been changed, so we leave that. And since we know this is shifting to the right, we have to lose product, so that's minus x. We don't know how much, and then we're going to gain product, plus x. Now, we know there's just one x uh, that we're going to lose and one x we're going to gain because of the stoichiometry of the chemical reaction. It was just one butane changing into one isobutane. So the change line highlights our, our stoichiometry, 1x, 1x. Equilibrium is always initial plus the change gives you the new equilibrium amount. Of course, now we're adding a negative number, so it's 2 minus x. Okay, Now it's 1.5 plus x. That's going to be the new amount for the product. We can take these things and put them in the equilibrium expression. So in problems, they won't always say initial, but we're, always, we're looking for hints on what are non-equilibrium uh, values that we can put in the initial line. So that's important to remember when you're problem solving. Well, we can just now, to solve this, put in the equilibrium concentrations into our K expression. So there's our product, 1.25 plus X, divided by 2 minus X, the reactant concentration at equilibrium. Okay, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2 minus x to get rid of the denominator. There it is. I'm going to distribute the 2.5. So I have 5 minus 2.5x equals the 1.25 plus x. Let's combine our x's. So I'm going to add 2.5 to both sides. And then I'm going to sub uh, x, that is. Then I'm going to subtract 1.25. Then I get 3.75 equals 3.5x. Divide both sides by 3.5 and x is 1.07. Now remember, this is at math class where we just stop at 1.7 and say we're done. We have to go back and figure out the equilibrium concentrations. And so butane is 2 minus x, which is 1.07. You see the new concentration at equilibrium for butane is 0.93 molar. Isobutane uh, gained 1.07 molar. And you can see the 1 to 1 stoichiometry loss and gain. And the new concentration is 2.32 molar for the product. So this is how the reaction shifted to the right after something was added. After a reactant was added, it shifted to the right. So I like to do what's called a K-check. And this really actually helps me to fix problems. I was able to correct some problems even on these slides uh, by doing this K-check. And so initially, uh, the product concentration, 1.25 divided by 0.5 is 2.5. So that's the equilibrium constant. It checks out. That's what it was initially. Now, if I put in the two new numbers, the ratio then is 2.32 divided by 0.93, and I get 2.5 once again. So the K did not change, even though I changed the concentration. The reaction shifted to the right to make up the difference in the added amount of the reactant. Let's think about it. Did reactions change in this problem? Absolutely. The reactions did change. We added some more reactant. The equilibrium reestablished itself reestablish itself with new but different concentrations. Did the equilibrium constant change in this? No, absolutely not. It stayed the same. The reaction changes its concentration so that it reestablishes what K is. It did not change. So K is just the ratio of the products to reactants. And if it's a number, let's say K was 5, of course it was 2.5 in this problem, but how many different ways can you make 5 from a ratio of two different numbers? You could use 10 over 2, 20 divided by 4, 30 divided by 6, 8.5 divided by 1.64, or 1.64 divided by 0.328. All of these ratios equal 5. Check them out on your calculator. K doesn't change, but there's an infinite number of ratios that it could equal. So we have to think about what are the new ratios initially and at the final equilibrium concentration. So if you can understand this very important fundamental principle of how a uh, system changes with concentration, I can easily show you how pressure volume changes fit into this mindset, into this concept. And I can also easily show you how temperature changes will fit into this. They're all related to how you are 
adjusting the concentration of a reactant or a product. That's the end of this video. I hope you've learned something about LaChatelet's principle, and we'll continue the video series uh, with the other uh, topics of pressure and temperature changes. Thank you.